Hi everyone, my name's Jen. I'm an author and a book reviewer and I'm here today with what I think is the biggest book haul I've ever done in the nine years of making videos on this channel. So let's dive straight into it, grab a cup of tea, pull up a seat. Everything that I mention, I will list in the description box down below. Recently, I walked past foils on the way to a hospital appointment and I accidentally fell inside and bought a couple of books. Who would have thought it? I bought these from the recommendations section and I'm super intrigued by them. This is Waking for Ted by Marika Big. This is about a woman called Rosalind who is sitting at home waiting for her husband, Ted, to get back from work. She, it says, lives her life on Instagram. She posts about all the things that she buys. And recently her husband has taken away her credit card because she's spending too much money. The last line of this paragraph says, it becomes increasingly obvious to the reader that perhaps Ted isn't coming home. So it sounds quite sinister. Excited by that one. And the other one that I was drawn to was this by the vibrant cover. And then I saw it had a quote from Ayabami Adebayo on the front who I adore. This is The Middle Daughter by Chike Onegwe. This is about a young woman who loses her father and her sister. She's misunderstood by the rest of her family and she finds herself drawn towards this self-proclaimed man of God, a preacher, who says he can take her under his wing. But I think all is not as it seems. Recently, I also filmed a reading vlog where I read lots of books published by Stranger Press, who are a small publisher who publish chat books. And they're a great way to finding new authors. All of their work is work in translation. And there were a couple of authors that I discovered through reading those that I wanted to read more from. So I have now bought some of those books. The first one is this book here called At the Edge of the Woods by Masatsugo Ono, translated from the Japanese by Juliet Winters Carpenter. I was quite confused when I saw this one because one of the Strangers Press pamphlets is called At the Edge of the Wood, singular. So that is a snippet from this longer book. And I'm not sure if that was written first and it was later turned into a long form thing or if that's an extract from this one. Regardless, I wanted to read the longer version because I was really intrigued by the short one, which was two stories set in a haunted-ish wood and it was about parenthood and things hidden in the dark and I found it quite creepy and delightful. So I wanna read that one. Then the other one is actually not a work in translation because this author is Japanese, but she writes in English. This is Disorientalism by Kyoko Yoshida and it's published by Vagabond Press. It's a collection of short stories and it says it brings together stories that systematically smash the boundaries of the real and its imagining. Told with a deadpan, visceral humour, these stories unsettle and surprise, leading the reader into alternate realities at once comic and nightmarishly beautiful and human. I really loved her pamphlet, oh, Something Sleepers, Spring Sleepers, that was it. And it was about a person who was suffering from insomnia and then the writing became very dreamlike the longer they stayed awake and I found it really captivating. One that I was quite, kind of shocked by and also intrigued by was a pamphlet by Masumi Kobo and it was very sexually explicit and it was about two people who met up to have an affair dressed up in cosplay and this one is about I think five couples and one of those couples is the couple from the pamphlet. This is So We Look to the Sky and it's translated by Polly Barton from the Japanese. The top of the blurb inside says this shocking boisterous novel was a runaway bestseller and award winner in Japan and the final book in this stack of books which is inspired by reading Strangers Press pamphlets is a proof that I requested called Another Person by Kang Huegil and it's translated from the Korean by Claire Richards. I actually didn't love the pamphlet written by this author that I read but the premise of this one intrigues me so much that I want to give them another go. It's about a woman called Gina who's recently called out sexual harassment at work and now she's at home hiding behind her computer because she's getting a lot of vitriol directed towards her online and this is for fans of I May Destroy You and Promising Young Woman. I bought this book from Charco Press. This is Sylvia Malloy's Dislocations, which is translated from the Spanish by Jennifer Croft. Sylvia Malloy is an Argentinian author. This is a novel told in fragments, and it's about a narrator documenting the disappearance of her friend. It says, in some ways, this is expected, forgotten names, forgotten moments, and at times painfully surprising. It's praised by Mariana Enriquez and also Claudia Pinheiro, so I'm looking forward to reading that one. The next book is one that I have been anticipating 
for years. It's this book by Jessica Fox. Jessica and I have known each other for a while. She wrote a book called Three Things You Need to Know About Rockets, which was a memoir about her moving from the States to Wigtown, which is Scotland's book town. And the last time we saw each other, which I think was in 2018, we recorded a podcast episode together. I used to have a podcast called Books with Jen. It's still available on the podcast app and all episodes are still on this channel too. I'll link that episode down below as well. In that episode, we were talking about our love for the history of fairy tales and how that intersects with science and other things. And she was talking about this project. She used to be a storyteller for NASA. And at the time of the podcast in 2018, she was working with scientists in Edinburgh, I think, Think, yeah, based at the University of Edinburgh, and she was helping them write stories by teaching them about the history of fairy tales. And together, this is a collection of short stories and pieces of memoir that scientists have written, bringing together science and fairy tales. And Jessica has helped to facilitate all of this. It sounds absolutely fascinating, and I'm so thrilled it's out now. So that is going on my shelf. The next book that I've purchased recently is the cutest graphic novel I've seen in a while. This is Garlic and the Vampire by Brie Paulson. This is Garlic. All she wants to do is tend to her garden and be left alone. Thank you very much. She has a best friend called Carrot and also a friend who's a witch called Agnes. But then, rumour has it, in the local village there is a vampire and even though Garlic doesn't like interacting with people very much and isn't particularly brave, everyone agrees that Garlic is the person who should go out and defeat the vampire because she is a Garlic. So she has to put her big girl shoes on and go out into the world and try and save the day. I just think this is so cute, it hurts my heart a little bit. This next one is a collection of poems, it's a memoir in poems, it's called Standing in the Forest of Being Alive by Katie Farris. The blurb says that it is a collection that reckons with erotic love even as the narrator is diagnosed and treated for breast cancer at the age of 36 during a pandemic and political upheaval. I have subscribed to Modern Poetry in Translation and this is the most recent issue that's been sent to me. I really love this journal because it's a great way to discover new poets whose work you may not come across otherwise. This one is the food issue, Wrap It in Banana Leaves, The Food Focus. And this is basically just bringing together three of my favourite things, translated work, poetry and food. Yes, please, thank you very much. I could not resist this title when I saw it on the Emma Press website. Um, I have loved... Oh, I hear, can you hear that? You can let her in, hi. Hello. Come here then. Apparently Lola's just been dropped off at her house for a couple of hours. We're looking after you, huh? Are you gonna sit on this chair and have a snooze? That would be nice. Okay, where was I? Um, yes, I couldn't resist this book when I saw it on the Emma Press website. I have read a couple of really good nonfiction books that they've published. My favorite being Nina Mingya Powell's book, Tiny Moons. This one is called How Kyoto Breaks Your Heart by Florentina Liao. And this is a nonfiction book, a series of short pieces about settling into Kyoto as someone who has moved there. It says that Florentina is a writer and translator. Born in Malaysia, she lived in London and Kyoto before moving to Tokyo. Part of the introduction says, the following pages are a brief record of trying to find a home in Kyoto. A series of sketches, vignettes, and attempts to make sense of all the ways you can love a place. Here's what I figured out so far. When you try to belong somewhere, your chosen home becomes a reminder of what you stand to lose. It will shape you, make you, break you. To love a place is to love its people, and to love a place is to let it break your heart and I just think that that sounds wonderful very excited the next one is a book that was sent to me unsolicited I actually don't accept unsolicited books because I think it's wasteful I, if I want to review a book I will request it but I don't let publishers just send me things but somehow this one slipped through the net and it actually is one that I would like to try which is a relief so this is a short story collection with a very long title and we know that I love a short story collection with a long title this is because I don't know what you mean and what you don't by Josie Long I know that Josie is a comedian but I'm not hugely familiar with her work and I in the nicest way possible, don't particularly care about that. I just care if she's a good writer. And the blurb does sound up my street. It says, three teenagers believe they are witches. A woman defaces a local billboard. A bored landlord tries to influence his son's best friend. A cul-de-sac WhatsApp group discusses eggs at length. 
a heavily pregnant woman finds a way to time travel and a girl discovers joy on a stolen bicycle. So we will see if this is my cup of tea. Next on the pile, we have a novel published by Fitzcarraldo coming out in June. This is a proof. The finished one will be blue with the white writing and I have the press release here. This sounds right up my street. It says, housewife Natsumi leads a small, unremarkable life in a modern Tokyo apartment with her husband and two sons. She does the laundry, goes on trips to the supermarket, exchanges gossip with her neighbors. Tracing the conversations and interactions she has with her family and friends as they blend seamlessly into her internal monologues, Mild Vertigo explores the dizzying inability to locate oneself in the endless stream of minutia that makes up life confined to the home where both everything and nothing happens. So this is Mild Vertigo by Miko Kanai and it's translated from the Japanese by Polly Barton. It's out on the 21st of June. It is quite short, as I said, definitely sounds like my kind of thing. Next on the pile, we have this novel, which is one of my most anticipated releases. It's Chrysalis by Anna Metcalf. I recently read Watching Women and Girls by Danielle Pender, a short story collection that I loved. And the main theme of that was women watching women and in turn being observed by men and how women's bodies in particular have been objectified from a very young age. So I would like to read this one soon because I think that these will have things to say to each other and I always find it interesting when that happens. This is about an unnamed woman who goes to the gym a lot. She's been working out. She's recently severed ties with her family. And I think we don't hear from her personally, but we hear from people watching her. So we hear from a man at the gym who's been watching her and her changing body. We hear from her mother, who is watching her as she leaves her family. And we also hear from her work colleague too. And it says, each person is left with only the husk of the person they thought they knew before she became someone else. A woman on a singular and solitary path with the power to inspire and to influence her followers for good or for ill. So really I'm getting vibes of the vegetarian by Han Kang where we never hear personally from the main subject of the novel we just see her filtered through the eyes of other people and I'm always interested by that kind of thing. Oh I realise I have another modern poetry in translation here that I haven't hauled yet as well. This is as I mentioned poetry in translation in this journal is brilliant. This particular issue is Vietnamese poetry in translation so that one was one I forgot to mention earlier. Then we have a super cute graphic novel, which was a recommendation from one of you. I think it's called Bingo Love. This is the jackpot edition because it's got some extra material. It says, take a trip through time with Hazel Johnson and Marie McRae as they fall in love at church bingo in 1963 break up because of pressure from their families and then reunite nearly 50 years later. It just sounds really, really lovely. Obviously a stressful beginning, but hopefully a very happy ending. Next we have a short story anthology which is being published later in the year. This is a proof. It's called Peach Pit, stories edited by Molly Llewellyn and Crystal Buckley. This is about morally gray women, a stunning anthology of fierce and dangerous women featuring stories from Lauren Groff, Disha Filial, Kamin Chang, and other authors who we have. We have uh, Amanda Leduc, we have Alia Whiteley, we have Alison Rumfit, lots of fabulous people. So that is that one, it's coming out in September. The next book is also approved. This is coming out in July. It is The Ghost Ship by Kate Moss, not model Kate Moss, author Kate Moss, who runs the Women's Prize Kate Moss. This is the third in a series, but I have been assured by the publishers, pub publishers? publicist that this is a standalone or at least can be read as a standalone and I really hope that that is true. I have been wanting to read a story about these two historical figures for forever. I was kind of hoping that Jeanette Winston would do it but I, I will take this. This is about Anne Bonny and Mary Reed who were two queer female pirates in the 1600s and their story is so fascinating. I don't know why more people haven't written about them. So I'm very happy that this has been done. I mean this is this is a big book. A big book. As I said, it is out in July. The next book on the pile is Hong Kong's new book, which I have purchased. This is Greek Lessons, translated from the Korean by Deborah Smith. She is the author of The Vegetarian, Human Acts, The White Book. I have really enjoyed many of her books before. And to be honest, if I read the blurb of this and it was written by someone else, 
I might have not picked it up, but I really wanna give this one a go, but I think you'll be able to tell why, why I feel a little bit apprehensive. It says, in a classroom in Seoul, a young woman watches her Greek language teacher at the blackboard. She tries to speak, but has lost her voice. Her teacher finds himself drawn to the silent woman for day by day, he is losing his sight. I just am a bit apprehensive about this ability being used as an interesting plot point, as opposed to real people experiencing real things. I hope that that's not the case, but um, we will see as I read it. Next, I bought two collections of poems. We have Dear Bear by A. He Lee, which is a series of prose poems which brings together folklore and the environment. I read a few sample poems online, which I'll link below, and just found them very endearing. And then this one was a recommendation from one of you. This is Andy Jackson's Human Looking. Andy is a disabled poet, and it says that this collection speaks with the voices of the disabled and the disfigured in ways which are confronting, but also illuminating and tender. They speak of surgical interventions and of the different kinds of disability which surgery seeks to correct. Obviously, this definitely sounds like my kind of thing. One of my most anticipated books has just come out. This is Eyes, Guts, Throat, Bones by Moira Foley, and this is a collection of short stories. Listen to this blurb. What will the end of the world look like? Will it be an old man slowly turned to gold, flowers raining from the sky, or a hole cut through the wire fencing that keeps the monsters out. If that doesn't make you want to read it, I mean, I can't help you because that is one of the most intriguing beginnings of a blurb I think I've ever read. This is a proof copy of a novel published by Pushkin, which is coming out later this year in August. It's called Hangman by Maya Binyam. It says that it is about a man who returns home to sub-Saharan Africa after many years living in exile in America. It is an existential journey, a slapstick tragedy, a heartfelt farce. Hangman is a shockingly original debut novel about exile, diaspora, and the impossible search for black refuge. It's gonna take me ages to reorganize my bookshelves after this and I'm very much excited for it. Who else just loves that and finds it very therapeutic? I do. Next we have a book by Lex Croucher which came out the week that I'm filming this. I don't tend to read much YA at all but I love Lex so I would like to read this. This is Gwen and Art are not in love. They are not in love, not in love. It is about Gwen and Art. <laughs> if you hadn't guessed from the title, who I believe are both gay, but they have been betrothed to each other for forever. And so they decide to keep each other's secrets and then date other people, but I think be together in public. I think that that is the gist. That's the gist, it sounds brilliant. Obviously set in medieval times, here for queer medieval fun, sounds great. Then we have one of my most anticipated releases of the year, very exciting. This is A Little Luck by Claudia Pinheiro, translated from the Spanish by Frances Riddle. Claudia Pinheiro is an Argentinian author. This is published by Charco Press. Her book, Eleanor Knows, was my favorite book of last year. This is coming out in June or July. This is about a woman called Mary Lohan who is returning to her family home after I think 20 years, yeah, 20 years after a shocking accident. Um, so she's going back there and it says that it is about the debilitating weight of lies, the messy line between bravery and cowardice and the tragedies big and small that can ripple out from a single decisive event. I think she wants to revisit and remember the things she wants to remember without being traumatized all over again, but that seems to be quite impossible. I had a voucher for two Persephone books which I was given for Christmas so I had a delightful time going through their catalogue and picking the two books that I wanted to buy. Persephone books are a publisher that publish work mainly written by women that's out of print and forgotten about. They also publish a couple of books by men. They have a bookshop and they're based in Bath. They used to be based in London but they moved a couple of years ago definitely recommend them and I made a video a few weeks ago where I talked about some of my favourite things that they publish. They don't put blurbs on their books so let me try and remember why I chose these ones. This is Green Gates by R.C. Sheriff and I loved his book the Hopkins manuscript. It was one of my favorite books of a couple of years ago. So that was why I was drawn to this one. But also when I was looking at it on the website, it kind of reminded me of the unlikely pilgrimage of Harold Fry a little bit. There's no walking involved, but it's about a man who's recently retired. And it says inside on the um, bookmark, I think, yeah, his wife says, how could she say that his constant presence in the house was making her life unhappy? That his only way of helping her out would be to go out and stay out for eight hours a day. So I think he goes and either gets an allotment or maybe is just tending to his own garden. And it's about 
how they're trying to exist in each other's spaces for prolonged periods of time when they're not used to doing that. And the other one that I purchased is The Mystery of Mrs. Blencaro by Mrs. Oliphant. And I honestly don't remember anything about this one apart from I have read her work before when I was at university. I read a novel by her and really enjoyed it. And I've always meant to read more of them. I think this is about a housewife who's very frustrated with her lot in life, but I may have misremembered that. Anyway, I have loved her writing previously and hopefully I will love this one too. Okay, we are nearly at the end of this huge pile of books and Lola is very excited by that because I think she wants me to pay more attention to her, which is fair enough. We have got a couple of titles here from Tilted Axis Press. This is Choco Yono Station by Yu Marie, translated from the Japanese by Morgan Giles. And this is about a man called Kazu, who is now dead, I think, and then his spirit is haunting this train station. And it is a tale of fiction, psychogeography, and history all at once, tapping us straight into the lifeblood of a Tokyo we rarely see. Intrigued by that, then we have a series of short stories by Pravda Yoon called Moving Parts. This is translated from the Thai by Mweepa Popsicle, and I have read work by Pravda Yoon before. I read their collection, The Sad Part Was. This is, I think, set around a hotel and motel, and I always love stories set around hotels for some reason. It says, in a pink-walled motel, a teenage sex worker brings a grown man to tears. A love-struck young boy holds the dismembered hand of his crush, only to find himself the object of a complex menage a trois. A naked body falls from the window of a 20-story building, and two female office workers offer each other consolation in the elevator. So a series of interconnected short stories. Two proof copies here. We have got Shark Heart, A Love Story by Emily Hebeck. This is a book that's coming out in the summer, which is about a married couple. And they are told that the husband of this couple will be turning into a shark within the year. It's a allegory, extended metaphor for, for illness. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that is handled. Another crime book by Celia Dale is being reissued by Daunt Books this year. This is Sheep's Clothing. It's about two women who are released from prison and then go on to commit more fraud together. I really enjoyed her book. Oh, what's it called? Oh, A Helping Hand that they reissued last year. Her books were originally published in the 60s. And then finally, we have reached the last book of this huge haul, if you are still here, well done. This is Concerning My Daughter by Kim E. Jin, which is translated from the Korean by Jamie Chang. This is the paperback, which has just come out. It came out in hardback last year. This is a novel about a woman who invites her daughter to come stay with her. And then her daughter turns up with her girlfriend in tow and hasn't told her mum that she's queer. And her mum refuses to let the girlfriend stay. So it's about these complicated family relationships, about identity and love and belonging and I think that it sounds really, really brilliant. So those are all the books that I wanted to talk about today. As I said, I will hopefully have been able to list all of them in the description box down below. If the word count didn't allow for that, it will have um, gone into the pinned comment also down below too. I would love to know if you have read any of these books or if you are now intrigued by them. If you're new and you enjoyed this video and you would like to subscribe, that would be very lovely. And if you enjoy my content in general and you would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that would be very kind. Support over there allows me to keep creating free content on here for everybody. And there's a few extra things over on Patreon as well. Lola just huffed and puffed. I think she's had enough. Should we stop now? Let's stop now. Okay, right. Lots of love to all of you. Thank you for being here. Leave a comment down below talking to me about books and I will see you for another video next week. All right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks everyone. Bye.